press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update. Google, Microsoft, Adobe, they're all Silicon Valley giants, but they also have something else in common. They all have Indian CEOs. But if US President Donald Trump has his way, success stories like these could become harder to come by. He wants to tighten the controls over skilled migration. And that is one of several issues dominating talks between Trump and Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi in Washington, D.C. But we start in Mumbai, where Rebecca Bunden looks at how the new rules are affecting people's livelihoods. So New York is something, you know, people here in India idolize, you know. Prasimesh Mazumda looks through pictures of his time in the United States and remembers what a good life he had. He completed an MBA there. Then he worked for corporate America when firms were eager to snap up skilled Indians. But a couple of weeks ago, he packed his bags and returned to Mumbai. And it wasn't by choice. His struggling company had laid him off, and he couldn't find another one willing to take on a worker who needs a visa. I wasn't able to successfully find one because nobody was interested to take a transfer for the H-1B. And most of the people who interviewed me, they gave me a very good reason, saying that this new Trump regime is coming with the new reforms. Many Indian professionals use H-1B visas to work in the U.S., especially in the tech sector. But in April, U.S. President Donald Trump signed an executive order to review the visa program. American workers have long called for reforms to end these visa abuses, and today their calls are being answered for the first time. That includes taking the first steps to set in motion a long overdue reform of H-1B visas. And the call for reforms has set off an alarm in New Delhi. So far, there's not been any change in visa rules, but we are alert that no amendment should be brought in, which will hurt India's interest. Indians, both those working in the U.S. and those hoping to go there, are now concerned about their future. About 70% of H-1B visas are issued to Indians. With India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi due to meet Trump on Monday, the visas are expected to be one of the issues on the agenda. So even though there are no changes on the ground right now, uh, I'm seeing that uh, companies are already taking action, especially outso big outsourcing companies. They are trying to uh, uh, you know, show that they are very uh, cognizant of uh, impact of H-1B visa on American uh, workers. Mazumda says he doesn't see himself returning to the U.S. while Trump is president. Looking at the Trump regime, it's more like going back in time. Now he faces the challenge of having to build a very different life for himself in India. Rebecca Bundan, TRT World, Mumbai. To go and work in the industry. So now, India is one of the U.S.'s major defense partners and has just agreed to buy 22 U.S. drones worth around $2 billion. But let's take a look at what else they trade in. Now, the total trade between the two countries has tripled over the last decade, reaching about $115 billion. India has a $24 billion goods trade surplus with the U.S. Now, the main items bought by the U.S. from India are precious metals, pharmaceuticals and textiles, totaling around $68 billion. Imports of services such as transportation and IT account for $47 billion. So, joining me from New York is Srujal Parekh. He's the Executive Vice President of the Federation of Indian Associations. Uh, Mr. Parekh, thank you ever so much <clears throat> for joining us on Money Talks. Uh, let's uh, start by looking at this rather complex uh, economic relationship between these two giants. Um, let's talk about immigration first. If you're in India, let's say you've got an MBA, and you want to come to the U.S. to work, what advice do you give someone like that in this current environment? I would advise not to come, first of all, because if you are MBA, you have better bright future in India itself, and you get better pay in India as well this time. And current situation, what we're going through with immigration, uh, there are a little bit of uh, not clear picture how they're going to be treated as well. I'm not saying about the not used government, but the, they have a lot bad opportunity in India. But if they, Modi and Trump, make the bridge between these two countries with this bilateral talk today, then they have a bright future. I would say, yeah, then they can come. But India has a brighter future, and India has a lot of opportunity now with the, this growing economy. Right. So I would say them.
Stay right there. Let, let's turn this around for a second and look at it from American, uh, America's point of view. What effect do you think companies in Silicon Valley would see if immigration from India was curtailed? Uh, they will hurt big time because the India is the, not just exporter, like you said before, gold and precious metal. They are a bigger export of the technology. You know, the people who are technically you know, savvy, they're coming to this country, work. And we are our biggest, uh, India is the biggest exporter of technology, you know, people who have technical skill. So we need those technical skill in the U.S. Uh, because we don't have those kind of uh, training yet. And we are going towards restraining, but India has ready market, ready skill we can borrow for the better technology. Right. So I think uh, they should worry if they stop immigration uh, technical people coming to U.S. Right. Do you think Mr. Modi can persuade Mr. Trump to keep the doors open? Uh, we met Mr. Modi yesterday. Uh, we had the uh, community meeting with them and he was very optimistic talking to Mr. Trump today. They have a bilateral talk today for a few hours. I hope the results come out good and this is better for both countries. You know, both countries can build a bridge to bring the economics uh, of both countries to a better level. Um, your federation has been around from the 1970s. What factors do you see that have enabled Indian uh, entrepreneurs and Indian businesses to thrive in the U.S.? What are those factors that bring about that success? I think the, it comes down to education. You know, the more Indian get educated, they have reached to a certain level. I think you, we met, um, Mr. Modi met um, 25 CEO yesterday, and out of them, I was like six of them were Indian. So they had uh, uh, work hard and get to that level. And I think that education is the main factor which is bringing them to this top level of the uh, in its industries. Srijal Parekh, Executive Vice President of the Federation of Indian Associations in New York. Thank you ever so much for joining us.